What's going on guys? I'm gonna talk about quarters coverage again, but this time we're gonna get into the cover six family to start. The reason why I think this is a good time of year to talk about cover six is cover six is a good change up. If you've been a heavy quarters team and you run a lot of match quarters, I think cover six could be a nice little wrinkle that you can throw at your at, at, uh, at teams and get them a little bit off track. Also, it helps you, allows you to uh, not have to worry about matching a lot of the shallow and crossing route issues that you get when you play um, a match style defense. So in general, cover six, let's explain it. Cover six is quarters to the passing strength and cover two away from the passing strength. Now, when you start your game, you know, you make sure you're in, make sure your match coverage, you'll be set, and then you go through the different plays. Now, cover six um, has different types of cover twos on the, uh, um, basically in the game. Depends on the front, as I call it, or the, or the play formation. So you don't know when you look at it all the time. I'm right now in the uh, Raiders playbook, and let's look at like right in the on the right hand side we have a six nickel two four cover six and i'm going to click on that right now i'm going to come out versus two by two to start this right now okay let's go through this right now we have a okay let's go through this right now we have a two by two set we have our passing strength to the left of the two wide receivers and we have our tight end on the right hand side that's that's away from passing strength this is how it's going to line up the quarter side is going to line up to the two wide receivers and then on the right hand side of the screen you're going to get cover two so that's how it starts now the outside corner he's playing right now soft squat we also can have a cloud corner you have to know which front gives you which one so let's say you're like in um uh, nickel over or dime normal sometimes the cover sixes are different depending on which uh which formation you are in so just be aware of that so let's talk about cloud because i feel like that's the best way to play this defense and the reason why is because when i play this defense i want to stop shallow routes coming from left to right on screen or i want to give myself a little bit of a breather of i'm playing with the middle linebacker right and I know that if a shallow rock comes from the left of screen or from the passing strength and goes to the right of screen or away from passing strength, I can let it go because of what? There is a cloud corner right now that's playing the flat zone over here. So now all I have to do is just worry about if a crosshair route or a shallow route, I would call it under five yards, comes from the right of screen, okay? Coming over here to the left, I know that most likely I'm gonna match that, okay? I'm gonna take that away, I'll be able to wall that, and we're in good shape. But a lot of times what we're getting in the game right now is people running shallow cross, popular concept, and you're not sure which one you should stay with should you cut a guy off. The good thing about cover six is it allows you to basically only worry about really if anybody's coming into the match side on the left-hand side of the screen, okay? So you can take away that tight end in this case and wall that guy, all right? But you don't have to necessarily worry about it if it was the other way and the wide receiver was coming across on a similar concept, you don't have to worry about walling now Adams across the field, okay? So it kind of kind of gives you a little bit less mental work in a game and gives you a little bit of a halfway breather, okay? But let's just go back to the original play. Cover two, let's explain it so you know what's going on, all right? Let me run a play here, and then we'll come and watch the replay here in a second. <clears throat> the corner is responsible for zero to 10 yards, really zero to 15 yards, really. That's the way the corner will play it. He would align five yards outside number one, one um, five yards deep, I'm sorry, one yard outside of number one, and his jam is to try to, his, his responsibility is to jam reroute number one. In the game, if the if number one runs a vertical route, the corner will almost always never get a good jam on him, but he will bump him and try to throw him off his route. So he starts at five yards. For the most part, he will always try to get some depth in his drop, and he'll try to get back to 10 to 15 yards, unless there's a number two coming out to the flat right away. But in general, the good thing I like about um, a cloud corner is that he does a better job of playing deep and then reacting to routes that are thrown in front of them short. Instead of it being um, in some of the other coverages like hard flat and in soft squat, they will react very quickly to something that comes in the flat. And that could be manipulated by the offense, all right? So one goes vertical, he gets his eyes back on two, on the quarterback, and he reacts up, all right? And he's a flat defender. He is not in any type of matching principle whatsoever. Now the deep safety over here, 
the deep half field safety. He's just going to backpedal. He has half the field. He usually gets about the top of the numbers. I will say that when you get this type of route right now, with two guys are going vertical, you're going to get a little bit more stress on that safety, and it's going to be hard for him to really get out towards number one if needed. All right. <clears throat> I left that in the soft squad. If you're wondering why the corner is running with him, we'll get to that in a second. Let me put the corner. I just gonna, I'm going to audible him to cloud flat. I'm going to run the same play and we'll go from there, okay? So if people have time, they will still try to throw that route. And the reason why it looks so wide open is because the tight end is going vertical, all right? If the tight end was to be working outside right now on a quick out, and let me get the corner on a cloud flat. If he was working outside right now, the safety would be do a much better job of getting more width. Great job by the corner there to get a jam on number one. Um, but he would get to do a better job of getting a little bit more width in his back pedal, even though he's still a true zone defender. He just plays it with a little bit more awareness and doesn't stay so close to the numbers, all right? So because there's no threat going to be coming down the field, down the middle. Now, let's talk about the uh, vertical hook player, all right? Let's get out of the replay here. Let's talk about him. In this game, the vertical hook player is a matching um underneath style defense defender okay doesn't matter if it's a cloud flat or it doesn't matter if it's a soft squat he's still going to play it with some matching principles what are his rules okay his rules here are this he's on the back side of this um uh basically he's on the back side of the coverage he's on the weak side but the vertical hook player in this defense cover six he will always key two to three and he will look for the final two Meaning, if right now the tight end was to go vertically down the field like he is here, and the running back stays in the backfield or checks through the line of scrimmage inside the number two, it will be a situation you hear me say two stays two, three stays three. Okay? So, he has to read two. If two is running a streak route down the middle of the field, he will have to match it. Now, he won't match it with great leverage. He won't be hip to hip. He'll be a little bit underneath them but it will look kind of like two man, all right? If number two was to work anything short in or short out, right? Let's say he does something like this, or even if he runs a 10 yard out or 10 yard corner out, the vertical hook player would just sit in the hook. The hook in this game is between the hashes and the numbers. He's a line closer to the hash, so he's gonna stay a little closer to the hash, but that's where he's gonna go about 10 yards deep. So he's reading number two, the final two. All right, so in this case right here, against this route, he will match number two going down the field. All right, let me make sure I get off of him. And let's go through this. So that would be the computer player probably. That's what I would allow the computer to do. And he will match number two because number two went vertical. If number two was to obviously do something like this, then now he just becomes a hook player and he sends that to his corner. So that's what's happening there. Let me give you another combination that is what I talk about with the final two, final three. Let's say the running back swings out right now, right? Who's the final two? The running back. Is he going vertical? No. The final three is who? The tight end. He's going vertical. All right. So the, the um, vertical hook player will not match anything. He will still sit in the hook zone. Okay. So just understand that. Now let's get to the middle linebacker here, all right? He is the three receiver hook. So it's the same idea that you had in quarters coverage. Where is the third receiver in a two by two set? It's the running back. Where is he aligned? He's aligned to the right side of screen. So you need to make your reads from that side of the screen. You have to read three to two on the right hand side of the screen. Now I just told you the rules when it came to the middle line, uh, to the vertical hook player and how he is gonna look for what? The final two. Just like we've talked about in quarters coverage, you need to find the final three. So if for some reason the running back was to do what? Let's say the running back um, swings out to the flat and then we get the tight end working underneath like this. So the final three is who? The tight end. So you would need to do what? Wall that guy. Why? Because he's going from the zone side and he's going over into the quarter side, okay? The quarter side is a match defense, you know that. You don't know if this, if the nickel line, the nickel 
quarter flat, uh, quarter flat defender is going to be there. All right. So you have to do what you have to match them at least for the first couple steps. All right. Let me get off of this. The hardest play again, if I went back to the original play here, and this is something that's not necessary, but I would highly recommend it. Remember how we used to have in quarters coverage, the big play that I talked about. If you haven't seen my videos, man, go back and watch some quarters videos, right? If we get anything like this, right? Where the tight end works, sorry, the running back works up the field through the line of scrimmage and he goes vertical in quarters, what do, you, what do you have to do? You have to match that final three on a vertical route. If I ran the same route here in this defense, it would be the same thing, okay? If the running back was to swing out, that's two going, that's three becomes two, your new number three is who, this guy going up the field, I would get underneath him and try to stay, not with him uh, step for step, but I would just try to give your safety some help, okay? Because he's gonna have two vertical routes potentially with nobody else helping him. So that's something I would do. And if I'm using the middle linebacker like I would in this defense, I would absolutely make sure that I play with a little bit of looseness here, thinking about I'm gonna potentially have to match two vertical, all right, and I'm gonna have to come down late if there's any type of shallow route coming across. So it will look like this. And sometimes the computer will actually do this for you. You know, they will run like this, but I will look up and hunt up that new number three as if it was the uh, running back running down the field. Same thing, all right? So that's the beginning of that cloud flat defense. Now, let's get into soft squat quickly and just talk about how it changes. Really, the only person that changes is the corner, and I'll talk about that here in a second. All right, so let's go back to on defense, the original call here in the cover six, it's a soft squat corner. Let's see what happens when we run four verticals versus soft squat. Watch the corner, watch the vertical hook player. You see how they, how they became match players for a little bit. Now I know the corner came off late, but watch this. So the corner out here is still in the same alignment, five yards deep, one yard outside, the number one wide receiver. Keying one to two to the quarterback. In this case, he's not gonna stay flat-footed like he would in, in cloud coverage and try to jam number one. He's gonna sink back, almost like it looks like palms coverage, right? Slow sink, slow shuffle, reading one to two, all right? What he's reading is if one stays one, right, and goes vertical, and there's no number two coming to the flat immediately, he will sink back underneath number one, all right? Only when number two comes to the flat, then he might react up. Now, usually in the game, this is practice mode, so it's a little bit different. When a running back checks through the line of scrimmage like this, he doesn't count that. He doesn't consider that being a two to the flat because he's checking through the line of scrimmage. Usually it's handled by the linebacker in that case. Like we talked about, who do we have here? We're looking at it from a defensive point of view, right? We have our linebacker, he's key in three. Three, checks through the line of scrimmage. You don't know if he's gonna work to the right. If you don't know if he's gonna go vertical and you, and you don't know if he's gonna go out. So in this case, you match him just like you would in quarters because usually the corner, like I had said, will sit back and kind of run and match with number one. So if one stays one and there's no, there's no threat of anything else coming to the flat, he will match. So this includes uh, if it was a dig route, if it was a post route and there's no threat to the flat, when you have the corner and a soft squat, he will literally match that guy. Um, doesn't do, it's not like, a, it's not as good as the match that you would get in quarters. He would play outside leverage and low hip. So he might trail him by a yard or so, but at least you get body presence to help the throw if it goes down the field. So essentially, let me just leave the running back in just to make it real simple. This is gonna almost look like two man with both the, Squat, the soft squat player and the vertical hook player reading in the beginning, slowly reading, and then they're gonna turn and run and get underneath number one and number two. So that's the advantage of using soft squat. If you wanna, if you think a, te a team is gonna run like a deep comeback or something like that, right? And you wanna kinda get that extra body presence to make sure it takes care of that route, you know, he should be there. Now there are examples there, as you see there, where the, sometimes the receiver will still beat him to the flat, right? If the corner was to work inside, all right? I'm gonna go back to the cloud flat because the soft squat's gonna just turn into a soft zone looking for a new number two. But let's say we get this combination, right? Let's get off the corner. We got a cloud flat corner. So we get a combination. Let's pretend that number two was a corner route. Then this is the position that that corner should be in. He should be about 15 yards. I'm not sure who that corner is because he's not playing that great, but 
better corners will play it better with better zone awareness, all right? So that's how we start with cover six. Now let's just jump into some routes here. I'm gonna take a look at some things that I've seen. Um, I'm gonna try to play this some more, even on my streams a little bit, especially in situations where I feel like people are definitely gonna run a, a shallow route, like third and three, third and four, uh, maybe big, their big, that's their base play on first and 10. So I'm gonna call two, four, cover six. And let's say, let's just run, let's just see what we have here. And I'll quickly get into some different formations, but I'm trying to stay in the two by two world. All right, inside cross. So this is kind of a mesh concept, right? You get two crosses crossing each other at the low level, and then you get that deep dig or deep sit down behind it. So that's the triangle read on the inside right there. So right now we have cover six. And again, I'm gonna play cloud because I want I want to know that I have at least one player on the right side of his defense who's in a true zone on the underneath part of my defense, okay? So since I know the route, it'd be easy for me to match this, all right? I'm keying right now, linebacker three to two. So the three right now is on my side, the running back, okay? And I'll key two to this side, right? But I know if two was to come underneath and cross across the field, I don't have to necessarily worry about him. Why? Because he's going to the... Um, he's going into the zone side. So in this case, I get two guys crossing and I'm gonna end up sitting back here because I saw that my nickel didn't have any work, okay? He didn't have to worry about um, his number two going outside because his number two went inside. But my first initial steps was, okay, you saw me kind of move with this guy. I was about to match him and then I said, okay, no, we're good. And then I can get back there. So that comes into the little bit of a, just advanced thinking and knowing what's coming and knowing what everybody's job is. But let's just say a team is running a switch concept on the left-hand side. I don't, I can't do it right now. So I'm just gonna put them on out. But if, you know, if they had a post and everybody loves the post and the wheel route by number one and number two, but let's run a play that we know that the corner is gonna get, I mean, the nickel is gonna get eaten up, right? He's gonna match number two to the flat. So if I got something like this, I know that I would have to go get this guy and I would have to go chase that guy. He can out, he could probably beat me with speed across my face, but I'm gonna try to get some depth and try to make a tackle on him before he gets to 10 yards, all right? That's a really tough play that I'm giving myself here, but I wanted to just show that to you because that's a little bit of the thought process that I'm trying to get done right now. Um, let's see right here, boom. So again, I know we got the match with the nickel, right? We got our quarters rules, two goes out, underneath 10 yards, he matches him. All right, we got our mod corner. He's gonna sit there and take that dig route, right? I'm giving a little body presence right now by staying underneath. This this is, you know, really fast tight end. He got across my face, but I'm still gonna try to chase this down and at least make sure I can make a tackle on it. Now, what's happening on the other side? If well, we don't have any, uh, the crosser coming the other way, but this corner is a cloud flat corner. He tries to jam one. He sinks back to about 10 to 15 yards, looks up the quarterback. This guy over here, the vertical hook player, right? His final two is who? The tight end. Tight end goes across. His final two is gone. He does not going vertical, so he becomes a hook player. So that would be another player that would be there for you, all right? Now, let's get into... We can sit here and do a whole bunch of different types of crossing routes, but let's spend a little bit of time on routes you might see a lot, which would be some sort of tight formation, right? So let's go to... Let me see if I have anything right now. In my custom playbook, I should have a mesh concept in here somewhere. Everybody runs this PA cross play, right? Um, this is a really tough play. I'll come back to it, all right? I don't want to start with the hardest play first. All right, where are we at, where are we at, where are we at? You can see I don't run mesh that much, huh? Let me just, okay, I think I have it here at the back end. All right, mesh with a wheel, let's do that one, all right? Mesh with a wheel, cover six, I'm gonna come out. I'll use big nickel over G here in this one. All right, so now passing strength is where the two wide receivers are to the left. Away from passing strength is to the right, so that's where the cover two is. We already have a cloud flat when we come out in big nickel over G. Remember I told you, different formations give you different um, assignments on the backside. Because of this formation, just like in quarters coverage, the rules change, okay? Um, he can't get hands on number one. Now, I'm pretty sure I might be able to try to press number one, but he's okay. I actually like him in that position because what? He's in the flat. He's in position to help himself take care of what? Corner routes, um, short corner routes, things to the flat. Let him sit out there. Let him play that position. 
this vertical hook player, anytime we get a compressed set like this, the rules of matching two on your final two going vertical are out the window. You are now just a true zone defender, okay? It doesn't matter if two goes vertical. I'll double check that, but I'm pretty damn sure that's what it is. And on the left-hand side of the screen, we have our box check. If you don't know box, go back and watch the quarters film versus two by two stacks and snugs. You can find out exactly how box plays. But right now I know I'm the inside wall player. I have to wall anything going from left to right. Isn't that true? No, it's not true. Gotcha. So because if anything comes from left to right under 10 yards, a quick shallow route, where is it going into? It's going into the going into the zone side so you don't have to worry about it. Now you can let that go and you can spend more time playing over here for deeper routes, dig routes, okay? Or chasing something out here if they run a, some type of flood concept to the left, okay? And you can sit out there and help out on that inside corner route, all right? So just understand now you have more flexibility of playing some of the routes that people can run out of this besides mesh. They can run flood, they can run spot, um, they can do, you know, double outs, bench, now you can sit there and you can really help out underneath and try to help out on some of these things. So that's a real nice thing about this. But let's let's look at it versus mesh. Again, I, if I didn't use this guy, you know what? Let's see what the computer does. The computer doesn't play this right. So please don't judge what that middle linebacker is going to do. We're going to look at everybody else does though, all right? All right. So I tried to throw the route that I think everybody throws in the game. Everybody loves throwing the um, the shallow route, going from left to right on screen. <clears throat> really, the best the best shallow route versus this. I'm not teaching offense. Is going to be the route the route that's heading to where the three wide receivers are or the third receiver is, right? Because that's going to pull. This is going to this route right here. This wheel is going to pull your quarter flat defender a little bit, and then really kind of open up potentially this route here. All right. Now, I don't know why the middle linebacker, again, middle linebacker is a little bit crazy, but he actually matched this guy into the flat. Um, interesting. I guess technically he's not wrong. He's taking the first crosser from the right side of the screen or from the weak side of the defense to the strong side of the defense, and he's helping out with that. So technically he's not wrong, and that's actually probably the best way to play it. So let me not pretend like he's wrong. Uh, let me go back to this to replay. But again, let's just look at the crosser that's coming from left to right. He's going from the match side to the zone side, right? And you have the, I told you about this player here. His two ends up going underneath 10 yards. It doesn't go vertical. So he becomes a hook player. So he's there, right? And then over here, our corner is playing just the corner flat. He's going to get some depth, but then he's going to be able to come up and break down on this throw that I threw ultra late. Okay, we have our safety back here who's playing deep half. They will do this, just so you know, this is the field sense awareness stuff that he's a deep half player. And if he doesn't have any work over here whatsoever on his half of the field, he will squeeze with that, with that, um, with that, with that post route. So technically his half is from here, right? Right down the middle of the field to all the way to the sideline on the right hand side. So if you get a post and that's the only route you got to worry about, stay over the top of it and that's fine. So he's not really matching. He's just late in the down being smart, okay? And over here we have our box. He has first to the flat, all right? Technically that would be what? So as soon as out of these three players in box, he has the, the, quarter, the quarter flat nickel has first to the flat. The first guy to the flat is this wheel route. I don't like how he backs up, but he's supposed to match the wheel. All right, I think he reacted late, but that's okay. The corner out here has first deep outside vertical, right? He doesn't have any threat because this guy, the number one wide receiver, ran a route over the middle of the field. So now all he has to do is, if this guy was for some reason run back to the corner, he would be there. But right now he can help out on this wheel route, right? Because he doesn't have any work in his, in his deep outside quarter, all right? His match quarter. And then we get our safety. He's gonna take the first vertical that goes inside. And that's the first guy showing up to him. So he takes that guy. This is a beater in a sense. Not a, you know, not a actual like breaks the coverage, but in real life, this is a problem too. You know, he has to he has to basically drive down that route. All right. That's where the middle linebacker, if you're using this guy, I like to always kind of get a little bit of depth in my drop to start 
to kind of like give some body presence if there ever is a dig. And then I'll worry about matching anything to the flat late in a sense, kind of like what I had in the other clip. All right, but he's not wrong. The middle linebacker technically is not wrong in this. All right, he doesn't have to worry about the crossing route from the right, left of screen. He doesn't have to worry about 17 going from left to right. He has to worry about if anybody comes into the match quarter side that he needs to match that. So he's not wrong there, all right? Now let's just run, uh, like I had said, let's see if we can run something just to give you an advantage of your playing defense and you want to get some more, uh, you know, you want to get some better leverage on some money plays that people like to run. You know, a corner route concept. Let's just go with um, trying to get the corner involved on the other side too. Uh, let me just do let me just do this play here because I was talking about it. Let me do a flood concept on the left hand side of the screen. All right, so we kind of have that loose stack a little bit wider than usual. Right, we get the back flaring out over there. On defense, we have our cover six with a cloud flat. So let's see what happens here. I know that basically if anybody crosses across my face, it's okay from left to right. Right to left, no. But if I see all three wide receivers going out, okay, usually if you're playing box coverage, you know, this is something you got to think about, that you would sit here and try to take away anything from deep to short, 10 and under, right? But since you know that this isn't a pure quarters coverage, you don't have to worry about anybody coming from left to right. If any of these wide receivers on the left-hand side of the screen did something like this in normal quarters, you know, you would have to start to be able to match that, right? But because you don't have to worry about that, you can really play a little bit more loose, right? And you can kind of sit here and you can kind of help out in some of these deeper routes down the field on the left-hand side because you don't have to worry about any shallow routes coming from left to right. So if all those guys stay true on the left-hand side, it's fine. Even if one does come under, it's fine. Really, all you have to do is worry about somebody showing up late, like kind of like in that play, somebody showed up late, but it was at depth and I had enough depth to help out. So that's one good thing about playing cover six. You feel a little bit better about the backside of what's going on, all right? And this little wrap route is a nice little play versus cover six. So you know what? If you knew that was the problem and you felt confident that the ball was not going to go to the corner, then you know what? Maybe you can sit here more in the middle of the field. So that would be my number one suggestion. All right. Now, let's talk about crossing routes quickly out of the snug set. Because I've had this question before and I, I get it, man. It's not easy. It's not easy to stop some of this stuff. So uh, it'll be more like under center, I would think. If I have some formations here, I know Wing Stack has some good crossing routes. Uh, let's take a look at this one. PA drag wheel. Oh man, I picked the wrong play. Let me get back into this in a second. You know, most of the time you get one deep crosser coming across the field. This one's gonna have two. All right, let me go find one that has one crosser for now, just to make it from a teaching purpose a little bit easier. All right. All right, we'll go with this. We'll go with. Uh, PA close. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to match the defense here. I'm going to play 3-4 odd, cover 6. So I'm not in nickel defense. Alright, so on the right hand side of the screen is the passing strength where the tight end is and the wide receiver. Alright, so that's where the quarters is. Now in this case, you're going to get our stack rules that we talked about in quarters where these guys are going to play, the two deep guys are going to play first in and first out. And then we're going to get here our linebacker. Alright, he's going to basically take first to the flat. All right, so it's very similar to box, um, you know, but there's there's no third wide receiver or third, sorry, running back that's split out to that side. So it's really just about these guys. But the rules for the third, three, the three receiver hook player pretty much stays the same. Um, as soon as three declares itself, start to move towards number three. Now, again, because we are in what? Cover six. If something was to come across the field shallow, like that, that tight end route, you don't have to you don't have to worry about matching him okay so right now both the backs are stepping to the right so it's four strong but still three goes to the right so if you were in your normal defense and quarters you would have to know okay i would have to potentially match number three all right and in this case it starts as the tight end then it becomes actually the running back that's sitting down and then because it's a four strong play i'm going into too much detail here the backside um vertical hook player should take care of that guy going across the field. But let's just talk about what we're here for is that deep cross going from right to left. Because you have a corner, you're gonna get much better body presence on that. So you're gonna get the safety, the strong safety trying to match this, but 
sometimes they get out leveraged and then now you have a corner who's sitting over there okay if he's worth the crap he makes a play on that ball all right so let's take a look at it so if you're worried about people who like to run a lot of deep crossing routes and you know you have a key on what side they like to run it to you know that it comes from right to left you can potentially have a corner because they would think you're in quarters coverage because in quarters coverage what the corner would stay with this guy right so now you have a corner that falls off and sits right in this window and you could potentially get a pick so just understand that now if you had a team that was running it the opposite way and they were running a, a crossing around from the other side a lot then you would have to flip your defense and when you flip cover six and you flip it so that the cover two side is to the strong side it basically turns into cover nine so cover nine is the opposite of cover six the quarter side will play to the away from the passing strength and the cover two side will play to the passing strength so i just wanted to kind of give you an idea how that works and we can go from there guys i think this is a good start showing you the two by two the next video will be about three by one i'll get into how cover six plays that all right hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions comments concerned let me know talk to y'all later man peace